Now you had a kidney transplant a year ago. What would have happened to you if you hadn't had that transplant? Uh, probably wouldn't be here. Now, do you think there's an afterlife? Where would you have gone? Uh, there's only two places you can go. You can go to heaven, you can go to hell, one of the two. Um, I mean, we either go to hell or heaven. So where are you going? I'm going to heaven. Probably heaven. You think you're a good person? Yeah, I try to be. I try to be a good person. Okay, how many lies have you told in your life? Many lies. Maybe about 15, 20%. 20%? Have you ever stolen something? No. It's not one of those many lies, is it? <laughs> yeah. Have you ever used God's name in vain? I've said, oh my before, yeah. It's blasphemy, it's very serious. Yeah. Things aren't looking good, Eric. Oh man. Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Yes, I have. Okay, there's good news and bad news. Which would you like first? The bad news first. The bad news is that you've broken three of the Ten Commandments. You're a self-admitted, lying, thieving, blasphemer, and you have to face God on Judgment Day. If He judges you by the Ten Commandments, you're going to be innocent or guilty. Mm, hard to say. It's not. It's easy. Lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterate heart, you'd be guilty like the rest of us. Oh, boy. Would you go to heaven or hell on that basis? Purgatory. There's no purgatory. It's like you said at the beginning, heaven or hell. True. Okay. Well, the Bible says if you hate someone, you're a murderer. That's how high God's standards are. And he's seen your thought life and you're under his wrath. And if you die in your sins, you'd certainly go to hell. The Bible says all liars have their part in the lake of fire. So does it concern you that if you died today and God gave you justice, you'd end up in hell? No. You don't care about your life? I mean, yeah, I do. Yeah. So it does concern you? Yeah, it does. It does. Okay. Tell me, what did God do for guilty sinners so he wouldn't have to go to hell? God did something wonderful. Do you know what it was? Forgive them. He forgives everyone. I know that pretty much. No, the Bible doesn't say that. Well, God became a human being 2,000 years ago, Jesus of Nazareth, who gave his life on the cross to take the punishment for the sin of the world. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. That's what we looked at. You and I broke the law. Jesus came and paid the fine. And if you're in court and someone pays the fine, the judge can say, Eric's guilty, but someone's paid his fine, he's out of here. And God can dismiss your case, forgive your sins in an instant, and grant you everlasting life as a free gift, all because of what Jesus did on the cross. Just before he died, he cried out, it is finished. In other words, the debt has been paid. Eric, that means God can forgive all those secret sins. He can wash you clean. He can make you righteous in his sight in an instant because of Jesus' death and resurrection. Okay. At the moment, Sonny, you're like someone standing on the edge of a plane, 10,000 feet up. He thinks he's going to save himself by flapping his arms. Okay. It's not going to work. He's got to trust the parachute. Uh -huh. At the moment, you think you can save yourself by being a good person. It's not going to work because you're not a good person. You're like the rest of us. Transfer your trust from yourself to the Savior. What you have to do is repent and trust in him. That's not going to be easy because the Bible says we love darkness and we hate the light. We love our sins. We get pleasure out of sin. So you've got to say, God, you've got to please change my heart. Give me a clean heart. Please forgive me. And he'll do that. You'll be born again with a new heart and new desires. You'll pass from death to life. And God will grant you everlasting life as a free gift. Now, do you think I'm telling the truth? Yes. Okay, so if you died today and God gave you justice, you'd end up in hell. There are two things you have to do to be saved, Eric. You must repent and trust in Jesus. When are you going to do that? When I go to church on Sundays. Oh, it's right. It's Thursday today. You might be dead by Sunday. Oh, man. Really quick, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our YouTube channel where we post two new encouraging videos every single day. We also have many more resources available on livingwaters.com. Thank you so much. 150,000 people die every 24 hours. Mm. So I'm saying, Eric, just in the quietness of your heart, yield your life to the Lord. Ask for forgiveness of sins. Put your trust in Jesus. Oh, yeah. Transfer your, your trust from yourself to the Savior. And do it today because, there's, because God commands you to. Right. Are you going to think about this? Yeah, sure. I can think about that. I think about it every, pretty much every day. So it's, like, it's not like I don't think about it. I do. Do you have a Bible at home? Yes, I do. Dust it off <laughs> and, and be serious. Okay, be serious about your salvation. Oh, yeah, for sure. Thanks for talking to me, Eric. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Does that make sense, yeah. what I'm saying? Uh -huh. The minute you do that, God will forgive every sin you've committed and grant you everlasting life as a free gift. Now, do you think I'm telling the truth? Of course. I wouldn't lie to you, Sonny. This is so important. So you're going to think about what we talked about? Yes, I'm going to think about it deeply. 
you have a Bible? Yes, I do at home. I'm going to give you some literature anyway.